Genesis 22 and 2. Says, he said, he being God, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the top or on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Read it one more time. Genesis 22 and 2. He said, being God, take your son. Your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Somebody ought to say amen, amen. to the reading of God's word. Uh, this afternoon we're in part eight of our I'm Ready for My Next series. Uh, this afternoon from the topic, Indian Giver. <laughs> Indian giver, Indian giver, Indian giver, Indian giver. Father, we thank you for your word. The flower fades, the grass withers. But God, it is your word that stands the test of time. We're so grateful, God, that where we can come and we can commemorate and remember, God, your birth. Uh, God, and not, not be so dogmatic that where we're trying to figure out which day you was born. But God, to know that we can be free to know that you were born is the most important thing. And God, we thank you for the season, uh, for the spirit of giving for the spirit God of, of us being uh, be your people the only reason why we're your people is God because you gave your son now as we approach your word God we pray uh, God that you are ready our hearts and ready our minds uh, God there's something that you want to say to us something that you want to deposit to us in this house this afternoon I pray God for hungry hearts I pray, God, for hungry minds. I pray, God, for people, God, that uh, shake themselves, God, of whatever holiday slump we may be in. And, God, pull on the anointing, uh, God, that where we come uh, to be fed, we will be fed. If we come to be filled up, God, we will be filled up. We ask you to fill our cup this afternoon, God, and speak to us as only you can. And we're going to be careful to give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can have your seats in the presence of all. Mighty God. Come on, clap it up for Pastor C. Pastor C, Lady C. I love her. I appreciate her. Thank God for her. Last clap. Let's thank God for everybody who's watching online. Come on, Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, we ask you to share. Share our broadcast if you don't mind. Go to our Facebook page. Those of us that are here, go to our Facebook page. Like our Facebook page. Share our Facebook page. Uh, I promise you someone will get a word. Somebody will be encouraged. We have people that watch us literally, I can say with no fear of contradiction, literally watch us all over the world. Um, and it's just because of people uh, like you who share. Even those that are watching, we ask you to share um, the Facebook Live, and it'll be great. It'll be great. We really appreciate it. Genesis 22 and 2. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you, Indian giver. It was at the age of 75 that this man of God that we know by the name of Abraham, uh, unbeknownst to him, enrolled in what we know as the school of faith. Abraham was minding his own business, uh, living with his family, and God came to him and said, Abraham, there's something that I want to do in you and through you, uh, but in order for it to be accomplished in your life, you have to walk before me. In, in a real sense, God told Abraham, in order for you to be blessed, you have to get out. Somebody say, get out. You have, you have, you have, you have to get out. You got to get out from your family. You have to get out from your kindred. Uh, you have to get out from your familiar. I want to bless you, but I can't bless you right there. I can't bless you right there. Warren Wisby says that Abraham literally passed the family test. The family test. He, he had to leave his family in order to receive what God had for him. And then as soon as he left, Genesis chapter 12 verse 10 says there was a famine. Then a famine hit. So Abram had to survive the family test. Then a famine test. But God was with them every step of the way because he was walking in obedience. Then we see Abram, uh, God tells him to get out, but he doesn't fully obey God because he takes with him his nephew, his nephew by the name of Lot. Then a few weeks ago, uh, we talked about how, uh, how to uncover a cover-up uh, because here, this is what was going on. Abram was not able to hear from God clearly, and really God didn't speak to him anymore until he had got rid of cover-up, until he got away from veil, until he literally left 
left Lot alone. And whatever it was that God was doing in the life of Abraham, he had to push Lot out of the way for him to be able to hear what it is that God wanted to do. So Abraham had to pass the fellowship test. The fellowship test. He had to pass the family test, then the famine test. Now, the fellowship test. And here Abram was walking with God and he had to get to the point, to the level that every step of the way God was preparing him for something. God was preparing him for something. In the middle of that journey, God came to him again and he says, I want to make you a deal. I want to offer you something. I, I literally got a deal, but Abram, it, it's up to you whether or not you're going to accept it or not. I want to bless you. I want to bless your offspring, bless your family. And, he's, and God told Abraham that I'm the one that's going to do it. I, I don't know about you, but every now and then God lets us get in a jam. He lets us get in the pinch and God says, it's not going to be by power. It's not going to be by might, but God said it's going to be by my spirit. God, God said it won't be your intellect that pulls you out. It won't be your, 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 your mindset that pulls you out, but no, it's going to be me. I'm going to do it. In fact, I've got a deal for you, Abraham. Walk, walk before me. And then Abraham, as he continues to walk with God, here he gets to the point to where him and his wife have this, have this scheme where he goes into her handmaiden Haggai and God tells him to go ahead and do what your wife wants to do as it relates to putting her out, put her and Ishmael out and as they're out there in the middle of a desert, as they're out there by themselves all alone, we talked about what to do when the water runs out. I, I don't know uh, who I come to talk to today, but I just believe that there are some people uh, that's under, under the sound of my voice whose water has run out to where to where your, your sustenance has run out, to where the check is no longer coming, to where you're not getting what you normally would get, but can I tell you when your water runs out that's when God will step up come on it's when you get to the end of your rope that God will be for you and let you know that I'll see you through every difficult place in your life then last week uh, all I'm doing is just giving you a review last week uh, we talked about go ahead and laugh Go ahead and laugh because here God came uh, to Abraham, changed his name and said, no longer would I call you Abram. I'm going to call you Abraham. And he said, even at your old age of 99 years old, I'm still going to bless you. I'm still going to do something in you. And Abraham laughed. He didn't laugh in doubt. He laughed because he was saying, oh, my God, God is going to give me joy. And then you look in chapter 18 of Genesis. The Bible said that his wife Sarah laughed, but her laugh was all almost a laugh of doubt to where she could not understand how God was going to do this thing then God let her have a son by the name of Isaac whose name means laughter and so we learned last week that it's God that has the final laugh it's God that has the final say so my circumstances can look comical my circumstances could look crazy to the average Joe and crazy to the average bear but God is saying no 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 I'm going to have the final say so because I'm going to do something in your life even though it seemed like it can't happen so let's look at Abraham's life can you imagine for 10 years for 20 for 30 for 40 for 50 years him longing and walking with God anticipating God to do something in his life but can I tell you that everything that happened in Abraham's life from that moment that God called him in Genesis chapter 11 all the way to Genesis chapter 22 it was all for what God had in mind for him everything that Abraham was going through it was getting him to a point don't miss what I just said I said everything he was going through was getting him to a point and can I tell you that nothing that you're experiencing right now nothing that you're going through right now is for happenstance no nothing just happens but God takes my trouble God takes my trials and he used them as stepping stones for me to be able to get to the place that he's called me to be I love that about God because can no other person, no other group of people can be able to look at their trouble and say, I can count it all joy. Only the believers, only the people of God can look at their trouble in James 1-2. He said, count it all joy when you fall into diver temptation. I can look at what I'm going through and know Romans 8-28 tell me, for I know something that all things are working together for my good, uh, for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. I'm so glad that I'm not just going through to go through. I'm so glad 
glad I'm just not broke just to be broke. I'm so glad that God has a future and God has a hope for me. All I need to do is, is hold on. Give that all I got to do is hold on. Give me everything that was going on in the life of Abram. Everything was going on. It was for a moment. It was for a purpose. And in fact, God, God was telling Abraham, it's examination time. Say examination time. It's examination time. Y'all listen to me. He ain't doing them playing with the speaker. Listen to me. Look, examination time. Look, look at examination time. Genesis 22 and 1. After these things, God tested Abraham. Here, here's examination time. After these things, now God is testing him. God is bringing him into the classroom of life and he's saying to him, Abraham, I got something that I need you to know. I got something that I need to teach you. I got something I want you to learn, but listen to me closely. What it was that God was showing him, don't be nervous, don't be fretful, because literally it's an open book test. He said, Abraham, everything that you need in order to be successful, I've already taught it to you. Everything that you need to be successful, I've already let you know what you need to do in order to accomplish. It's an open book test. God had promised them a child, and then Sarah and Abraham received the child. Look at Genesis 22 and 21 and 1. Look at it. The Bible says the Lord visited Sarah. And he said, and he as he had said, the, the Bible says the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, as he said. Y'all, y'all missed it. I thought it was just nine o'clock service because it was just a little early, but I see the afternoon crowd don't got it either. Here, the Bible says the Lord visited Sarah as he said. God said that he was going to visit and God came and visited just as he said. God said he was going to come through. That's it right there. Whatever you just did, I felt so. I felt my help just then. Come on. God said, I'm going to visit. I'm going to come by, I'm gonna come by your way. I'm going to swing by your way. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to swing by your way. And whenever I swing by your way, you're going to see me in a real and a fresh way. The Lord visited Sarah just like he said. But look at the verse. Verse 1 says, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. My God. He said, I'm going to come and show up and I got a promise for you. I don't know who I'm talking to. By the time you get to the end of the year, sometimes we start mailing things off. Sometimes we start saying, well, it's it's not going to happen. Well, it wasn't meant for me. No, can I tell you that God said it? That settles it. Come on here, somebody. If God had made you a promise, a promise from God is just as good as a manifestation. I don't know what you're believing God for, but my responsibility is not to try to push the promise through, but it's my responsibility to hold on and know that help is on the way. Y'all, they go help me preach here. I got to hold on and know that God is going to do something in my life. He said, I, I, I need to examine you. Abraham I, I, I want to examine you mean to tell me I'm, I'm, I'm over a hundred years old and you still want to test me can I tell you you can never get too old to where you'll ever graduate from God's classroom. Uh, the only time you're going to graduate from God's classroom from taking tests is when you see him. Come on. When you see him, then you won't have to worry about no more exams, no more pop quizzes, no more tests. But God said, when you see me, then I'll be, I'll be done with you. I speak that over your life because so many times we think, we think that our life is over. We think that we miss our better days. We think that our better days are behind us. But no, my friend, can I tell you, you got better days in front of you. Can I tell you better is the end of a thing than the end thereof. God has a promise. He has something he wants to push through you. Look, look, God tested him. Look what test means in the Hebrew. Test means to put to the test mm. in order to ascertain the nature of something, mm. including imperfections, faults, or other qualities. It's what a test. It literally means it's in the Hebrew uh, to, to try to ascertain, to try to grab some knowledge, to, to figure something out, uh, to, to figure out the nature of something, to, to figure out the imperfections of something, to figure out the faults of something and some other qualities. And one thing we must learn, we must know the difference. We must be able to distinguish the difference between a trial and a temptation. A, a, a trial or a test and a temptation because here God does not test me to try to get information. John 2 25 says he already knows us in my heart. God, the, the psalm writer said that he knows my early rising and my down setting. God said I know every hair on your head is numbered. I know he said if a sparrow hit the ground I'm going to know what's going on. God said I know everything about you but what God tests you and I on what God allows a test to come through in our life so not that he can know what's in my heart but so I 
I can know what's in my heart. God lets me be tested. I come on here. I don't got to have my prophetic hat on, but I can. I can be. I got a sneaky suspicion that there's somebody that's under the sound of my voice that you're right now in the test of your life. You don't know how you're gonna come out of what you're gonna come out of. You don't know how you're going. I don't. You know how to make your ends meet. You don't know how you're going to get back to the place that you need to get to. Oh, but God is letting you be tested right now. The way you don't know what's in your heart. Oh, y'all not gonna talk to me in here. Have you ever? thought you was beyond something have you ever thought that well no I've graduated past that nobody got to worry about me doing that it's only whenever it is that you're in the test that you'll see how well, how much stuff that we still need to be delivered from so don't you ever look at somebody else and say I can't believe he's smoking all that weed I can't believe they drinking all that look I can't believe they sexing up with all that many people I can't believe oh no 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 don't you know that, 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 no, that we, he that think of he stand first Corinthians 10 12 say take heed lest you fall it's not my responsibility to look down on nobody. It's my responsibility to know God. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I'll probably be smoking. I'll probably be drinking. I'll probably be, oh, y'all so saved. I, y'all so y'all act as if y'all got no, nothing that y'all struggle, nothing that y'all fight. But can I tell you, God will test us to see what's in our heart. We, we, we learn God. God learn. God teaches us. He teaches us through our temptations and and listen let me let me show you what the difference is because there's a difference between trials and temptations listen to me closely temptations come from our desires within us while trials come from the lord who has a special purpose to fulfill temptations come from our desires you don't believe me look look at james 1 13 says let no one say when i when he is tempted i am being tempted by god for God cannot be tempted with evil. And he himself tempts no one. So stop telling that fib. Stop telling that lie. Stop telling that story. If the Lord didn't want me to do it, he wouldn't have let it come across my path. If the Lord didn't want me to do it, he wouldn't have never let me see it. He already knew I was going to do it. He already knew I was going to say it. He already knew what was going to happen. No, my friend, that's not how it works. The only reason why you're tempted in that area, because there's something in you. There's an enemy enemy. Come on here. That lures us and pulls us and to want the things that God does not want us to have look at verse 14 the bible said but each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire the only reason why you have a temptation in that area is because it's something that you want oh i'm not trying to talk down to nobody i'm not trying to be funny i'm just trying to be plain can i tell you that a homosexual hitting on me is not a temptation Y'all not going to talk to me. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be talk down. Nobody, your struggle, your struggle. But that ain't my struggle. Come on. You be saying, hey, all you want. I'm saying, hey, what? Hey, it's for horses, sir. Come on here, somebody. But but somebody, that's a dime top of line. If she got a cute face, small waist, and a bit, I'd be like, oh, let me get up out of here. Yes, sir. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Y'all not going to talk. Y'all, y'all gonna, so, my, 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 so, so you, if, if you're tempted from the end, from the, if you're tempted by something, it's not God that's tempting you. It's something on the inside. Oh, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Boy, y'all, y'all not doing me right. But can I tell you? Listen, 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 listen. Temptations are used by the devil to bring out the worst in us. But trials are used by God to bring out the best in us. I'm preaching. Uh, temp temptation is your, the devil puts the temptation in front of us because he wants to bring out the worst in us. But God allows that to be able to bring the best out of us. The devil tempts me to destroy me. But God tests me to develop me. Preach boy. Uh, the devil tempts me or the sin temptation in order to destroy me. The thief come. John 10 10. The thief come not before the steal to kill and destroy. But God allows me to go through something to develop me. He's trying to develop a character. He's trying to develop a stick to itiveness. He's trying to develop something on the inside of me the way I can know that he and he alone is my helper and my strength. Let me let me keep on going. I'm going to skip through all of this because when God tests us, God is testing us just simply to make us stronger. When God tests us, he allow things to go wrong. He allow people to betray us. He allow people to stab us in the back. Every now and then, I believe that God will let things go wrong to remind us that this is not heaven. Come on here somebody. This is 
is not heaven. No, but we're looking for heaven. You're not going to have heaven here on earth. You're not going to go have a life where there's no trouble, there's no trial, there's no pitfall. But God lets you know every now and then, this is why I'm looking for a city. This is why I'm looking for a place. This is why I know that there's a land. Jesus said, I go away to prepare a place for you that where I am, that you may be also. He let something go wrong in my life every now and then. Then let me keep on pushing. Then let me keep on marching. Then let me know that someday, oh, it's going to be Sunday all day. And I'll say howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. Yes, sir. Every now and then, God lets me go through something. Let me know this is not heaven. And God lets me go through a test because he wants me to be a greater witness. He wants me to be able to say when I didn't have any Christmas present, when I didn't have anything for my baby, God let me go through that test. The way I can be able to look back and say, you know what? I'm stronger now. You know what? I'm wiser now. You know what? I'm better now. And I'm going to let my light so shine that where men can see my good works and I can glorify my father. I feel like preaching today. <laughs> I, I, I think I take that pastoral privilege. I believe I will. Let me let me let me tell you. Let me let me tell you what this man of God said about temptation. Look, put this quote, quote on the screen. When the devil tempts, it is that the tempted may fall. But when God tests, it is that the tested may stand. When the devil tempts me. He tempts me so I can fall. When God allows me to be tested, it's so I can stand. And let me tell you that standing is not a physical posture. Standing is not you standing up. But no, standing is a posture in my heart. Standing, I can be standing when I'm in a wheelchair. I can be standing with my back and I'm in an intensive care. I can be standing when I'm in hospice. I can be standing because I'm standing on the word. It's not about a physical posture. Oh, but I can stand like Job. Job said, though he's me yet will I trust in him I can stand even when everything around me is telling me to fall and I heard Paul say having done all to do to stand he said keep on standing after you did everything you can do you pray and you cry you cried and you pray you fast and turn down your plate God said keep on standing because whenever it is I stand on the word God will see soon he'll, he'll be he'll be with me yes, he'll be. Keep, going. keep going I'm trying to rush I don't do good when I rush. I don't do good when I rush. Let me slow down a little bit here. Look, look at Deuteronomy 8, 6, 16. Look, 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 look. Deuteronomy 8, 16. Look what the book says. The book says, look what God says. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know. God says that you, you're in the middle of a, of a struggle. You're in the middle of a wilderness right now. But, but the thing that we always miss, we still eat. Y'all miss it. You may be in a famine, but you ain't missing. I wish grandma would say, you ain't missing narrowing meal. Come on here. You're not missing no meals. You're, 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 you're struggling right now. You don't have everything you need, but God is still feeding you. And God is feeding you something that even your parents, previous generations, had nothing to do with. They had nothing. They didn't even know about it. And look what God said, that he might humble you and test you. And to, oh, God said, I'm letting you go through this because I'm trying to bring you down. You think it's because you work your finger to the bone and because you're a supervisor and now you're your supervisor supervisor and because now you started your own business and you did this and you did that and now you work for yourself can I tell you God every now and then will let the bottom fall out of your life to humble you and I to let us know everything I have it comes from God everything I know it comes from God wherever it is God gonna take me it comes from God oh my friend God will humble me to let me know it's not about me but it's about him God said he wants to test me here it is don't miss this to do you good in the end. Uh, God, God said you're being tested. God saying you're being humbled. God said you're going through what you're going through. But what is it for? It's to do me good at my latter end. Can I tell you that trouble don't last always? Can I encourage you, let you know that God want to do you some good? God want to encourage you. God want to let you know that I'm going to bless you in your, in your latter end. God test us. Listen to me. God test us. To purify our faith. Look at me. Look. God. God tests us to purify our faith. God tests us to perfect our character. God tests us even to keep us away from us. Yeah, yes, he does. And this is what? It's examination time with Abram. It's, it's examination time with Abraham. Look what it said. Genesis 22 and 2. He said, look, look what God said. He said, take your son. Your only son. Whom you love. 
and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. It, it, it's testing time, Abraham. All that you've gone through, it was for this moment. Look at me. All that you've gone through, it was for this moment. All that you've experienced, it was for this moment. God is examining. He's examined us. He examines us in two areas. He examines us, number one, he examines us uh, in our heads. He examines our heads. God will tell you and I to do something that doesn't make any sense. God will tell us to do something that's not logical. God would tell us to do something that one plus one is not. It, it, come on, God. I don't understand that. You don't take two and five. Two and five is seven. But you'll take two and five and feed 5,000. My God. Can I tell you that God's economy is much different? God will do something that causes us to examine our heads. Come on. Let me give it to you in a nutshell. What is God doing in the life of Abraham? Can I tell you? Here it is. Why, why would God give Abraham a son? And then ask Abraham to kill the son. And look, listen to me. Listen to me. Abraham was minding his own business. God is the one that showed up and gave him the promise. Abraham said, I wasn't asking for a son. I just, I just, I was content to the point. I was content to the fact that I wasn't going to have a child. I was content. I was satisfied. Has anybody ever got to the point to where God had come and wrecked your life? Come on, look at me. Have you ever got to the point to where God has come and wrecked your life? Come on, look at me, Lit. Come on, Lit. Y'all look at me. I was sitting back there playing phone all week last week. And now y'all, I ain't gonna let you do it again. Not on my watch. And y'all sung all these songs. Took up 30 minutes. And I got everybody looking at the watch. Now y'all want to play on the phone. No, your auntie is alive. Yeah, come on, come on, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm trying to get this word to you. Here, yeah. can I can I tell you? Can I tell you that what God wants to do in our life? Don't play it. And if you want me to call you out, don't go to sleep. You want me to call you out? You know I'm gonna do it. Can, can I tell you? He examines our head. Abraham was minding his own business, and God said, I'm going to do something in you and through you. He was minding in his own business, and God said, You who I want to do something in your life. That doesn't and make sense God for you to promise me something then give me something and then take it back my God can I tell you that God will challenge you and I sometime and he'll say I know it doesn't make sense I know it doesn't make logical sense I know you can't figure it out but God never called me to try to figure things out God called me to walk by faith I know it doesn't make no sense for you to forgive somebody after they broke your heart I know it doesn't make no sense you know how we talk you you get me one time fool me once shame Shame on you. Fool me again. Shame on me. Can I find can I can I find that in my that's not in your Bible? Come on here. I know we live and die by that kind of stuff, but that's not in here. It don't make any sense to forgive somebody and forgive somebody and forgive somebody and forgive somebody and forgive somebody. But God to tell you, it's not about making sense. It's about making faith. It's not about making sense. It's about making obedience. And God will call me to say, I need you to do something even when it don't make sense. It don't make sense for me to give a dime out of every dollar when I'm already struggling. It don't make any sense for me to be able to drive up to the house of God when I already don't got no gas. It don't make no sense for me. To, I'm tired of it. And look what else God does. God examines our hearts. Yes, he does. Look, look at Genesis 22 and 2 again. Look, look what it says. It, God says, give me Isaac. It's almost like God, like, like Abraham said, who, Isaac? Look, look, look what it says. Yes, Isaac. Look at the verse. He, he said, I need Isaac. It's almost like Abraham said, who? in his heart this the promise God said yes Isaac whom you love so much God, God examines our heart God, God wants to know who is sitting on the throne of your heart God wants to know that that thing I bless you with has it taken my place that thing that I bless you with has it taken my place it, isn't it amazing how we can pray and how we can believe God we can fast and we can pray for God to move in our life God give me a job I need a job I need a job I need a promotion and then as soon as I get the job as soon as I get the promotion I, I ease on ease on down the road I forget all about God I don't come to the house of God I, I don't get my I don't get my tithe I don't do anything 
anything. I forget about God. We pray for God to send me a boo. I pray for God to allow me to be married. And as soon as I get married, instead of coming to the house of God, instead of being fervent, instead of being faithful, now I want to go on a Sunday siesta and go to the beach and go barbecue and do all this stuff. And I forget about the one that it gave me the promise. Oh, come on. It may be tight, but I know it's right. And I tell you that I can't forget about the blessed whore because I'm so absorbed with the blessing. I can't forget about the one that gave it to me. And God want to know what is in your heart. And he, he already know what's in your heart. He wants to know. He wants you to find out what's in your heart. Abraham, you love Isaac, but do you love him more than you love me? I, I, don't, I don't know what God is after, but this word is applicable to us all because there's some things that we love. There's some things we hold near and dear to, and God will always examine our hearts and say, do you love me more than this? Do you love me more than being culturally accepted? Do you love me more than you getting paid? Do you love right now? Love me more than right now than you being lonely? Do you love me more than what you're after? My God, some of us are after something. Some of us are trying to do something, trying to come but God wants to do you love me? Do you love me more? And Abraham is examining. But look, look, look what Abraham, he teaches us something because not only was it examination time, but look, we see the extent of my obedience. How far are you willing to obey God? Are you willing to obey him even if you have to walk alone? God wants to know how, how far are you willing to go? Even when it comes to hurting somebody's feelings, when it comes to upsetting something, when it comes to, um, to come shaking up your family, God want to know what, what's the extent of your obedience. Oh, this is real. Look, look, Abraham, Abraham is visited by God. God tells him to go and, and, and get your son, bring him to me. And look, look what God tells him in verse 2. One more time. He says, bring him to me, which I will show you. You don't know how powerful that is. God says... Obey me, and you'll know you're there when you get there. <laughs> so, so I need to obey God even when I don't have it all figured out. I don't even know where I'm going. I don't even know when he's going to show up. I don't even know where he's going. I don't know what he's telling me to do. He said, just keep on marching, and when you get there, you'll, you'll know. He said, I'll show you. I'll show you the mountain. I'll show you where I want you to make this sacrifice. Y'all listen to me, because I'm talking in the natural. Now I'm going to switch it over to the spiritual, because God is trying to take us to a place that where I can, what's the extent of my obedience? Some of us can never get to a level of worship. Some of us can never get to a level of intimacy intimacy with God oh because we only go so far oh I'll never forget there's a brother a friend a great friend of mine we was in a prayer meeting one time and we praying and we calling on God oh my God then all of a sudden something kind of just jumped on him I mean and something just jumped on him and then he just jumped up and walked off I said man what's wrong with you he said man I, I was feeling something I didn't know what was going to happen God ain't going to help me I said man that was right where God wanted you to get you God wants you to let go God wants you to get outside of yourself oh it's only when you get outside of your comfort zone. It's only when you go beyond your flesh and go beyond your feeling and go beyond what you want, the way you can experience God in a real way. You got to go even when people talk about you. You got to go even when you don't understand. God said, what is the extent of your obedience? Some of us obey God to a point. I stopped cussing. I ain't even getting no money now. <laughs> I won't drink as much. I ain't finna put it all the way down. Now, what, what is Christmas without some real egg now? What, what is Christmas without, without some rum food cake? <laughs> I, feel, I feel that right. I feel that right. Right. God says, I want you to obey me. Look, listen to me. I want you to obey me personally. I must obey God personally. Say that. I must obey God personally. This is the extent of my obedience. I must obey God. Per I can't obey God for you. You can't obey God for me. I must do what God has told me. <laughs> Let me get going. I, I must obey God supremely. Meaning that whatever the cost is, he's worth it. 
that, that, that's what worship is. The word worship means he's worth it. That's what it means. It means he's worth it. So whatever you rationalize in your mind, whatever you think that you got to get, you got to know that God, I'm going to do it supremely. You sit on the throne of my heart. God, you're the one that tells me no matter what trial I'm in, I'm going to obey you supremely because I'm going to get the victory. Oh God, I'm going to obey you supremely because I'm going to put you first at whatever cost it is. I'm going to obey you no matter what I'm going through. So let's look at this real quick. Let's look at the life of Abram. What is God telling him? God, what, what does God want? Let me ask you a couple of questions. What does God want? What does God want? God wants an offering. In particular, a burnt offering. What, what does God want from the life of Abraham? He wants a burnt offering. Yeah, come on, let me ask you another question. Who does God want? Who does what? He said, I want your son, your, your, your only son, your only son. You sent the other one away with God. Why would you send away another one and want the one that I got? God wants Isaac, the one that you love. Let me ask you another question. When does God want it? God said, I want it right now. That, that's what's going on in the life of Abraham. Look, let, let me tell you another one. What, what, let me ask you another question. What? is my destination. Where am I going? What am I going to do, God? Oh, yeah, God say, I'll show you when you get there. Uh, and and so, so let me ask you another question. Why does he have to do all this? Because God said so. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have Let me try it again. Come on, y'all. I used to be slow too. Come on here. Let me help you out here. <laughs> let, me, let me help you out here. Well, let me ask you again. What does God want? God wants me. What does God want? He wants me. Who does God want? He wants everything connected to me. When does God want it? Right now. He, when does he want my obedience? Now. When does he want my sacrifice? Now. When do we want me to follow him? Right now. What, what, where's my destination? What's going to be the end and what's going to be the end in mind? What's going to be the end goal? Oh, God said, you'll know when you get there. And why do I have to do it? Why are you calling me to do this, God? Because he simply said, because I said so. You're not going to be able to logically figure it out. You want to know why some people get used by God? You want to know why some people get elevated in the things of God? Oh, because they know how to sacrifice. They know how to let some things go. They know how to let some people go. That's why you never judge a person praise. You don't know what they've been through. You don't never judge a person where they are because you don't know all the things they had to turn down, all the things they had to walk away from. And God never blesses us until he messes up my life. You see, the, I'm preaching. Let me keep going. Maxwell taught, taught, taught about the law of sacrifice. John Maxwell talks about the law of sacrifice. How, how do you know when God is testing us? How do you know God wants us to sacrifice? Look, number one, we'll, we will, come on, resolve this in your spirit. We will get tested at each stage of growth. You, you don't outgrow testing. I don't care how long you've been walking with God. Abraham been walking with God north of 50 years. And he still has to get tested. And you cannot, you, cannot, you cannot pull on your last testing grade and pull it over into this testing. No, them, uh, you, you're a teacher, right? You can't, you can't, can my grades from last nine weeks stand for this nine weeks? Can't, can't, can't keep going over. Huh? Can, can what I did in, that, in my last class, can, if, I, if I took Algebra 1, me telling my grade in Algebra 1 don't equate in Algebra 2, that mean I got to do it again and again and again. That Can I tell you, whatever stage you're in, it equates growth. Number two, let me tell you what else about the law of sacrifice. The end goal is to pass the test. <laughs> Let me, I wish I could cope with that. The end goal is for you to eventually pass. <laughs> it's not for you to keep going again and again. And I, 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 love, I love the Kansas spirituals. I love them. My mom, that's one of my mom's favorite groups. But they got one song I got a problem with. I've been struggling, <laughs> straining. And I'm on my way home. Come on here, somebody. Uh, every now and then, I love y'all now. <laughs> but, but God is not calling me to perpetual struggle. Oh, no. I got to get the victory over something. I got to get the victory in one. Can you mean you tell me you don't got the victory over nothing? Let me get another one. I'm going up shy. Oh, on the rough side. Y'all, 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 anyway, y'all, let me leave, let me leave y'all song alone. Y'all ain't gonna come back, cause that's y'all, that's y'all song. Let me leave y'all song alone. Number three, test it, rough side of the mind. And I'm doing my best to make an end. <laughs> my Bible tells me <laughs> I'm overcoming. Look, verse three says, I ain't, verse, number three, listen to this, this is good, this is gonna bless somebody. Testing 
always precedes promotion. When you, when God is trying to elevate you, you can expect another test. No test, no elevate. Come on, no test, no next level. Oh, number four, number four. Look, listen to this. Self-promotion or promotion by others can never be replaced. It can never replace divine promotion. You can self-appoint yourself. You can say you're ready for this and say you're ready for that. And or even worse, you can let people push you into something. If I let someone push me into something, then they have to maintain me while I'm in that thing. If I let somebody, if I put myself there, that means I got to keep myself. Number five, my God, promotion requires sacrifice. What, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? What, what are you willing to, to, to go without? I love, I love what, what brother, what brother uh, Ramsey said. Dave Ramsey says that maturity is having the ability to delay your gratification. Dave Ramsey said maturity is having the ability to have delayed gratification. There's some things that I want. There's some things that I want to do. There's some places I want to live, some places I want to go, some things I want to drive, some places I want, some things I want to wear. But God is saying you can get there when you learn how to sacrifice. And here, here we, we try to go alone, world. We try to go around God, but it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Look at the life of Abraham. I see some things. I see examination time. I see the extent of my obedience. Look at the third thing, the execution of the instructions. Execute. A lot of us are awesome planners, but poor executors. A lot of us, even when God blesses us, God, a lot of us uh, to the point to where, to where we, we, can, we can say a whole lot of stuff. You know anybody like that? They just be talking and talking. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna. What we gonna do, we gonna do, we gonna do. They just be talking and talking and talking. And while they talking, I tell you what my daddy used to say, I see your mouth moving, but I don't hear a word you say. Come on here. And there's a lot of folks. They can say, I'm a, I'm finna do that. I'm finna go back to school. You be thinking for the 19th time. I'm finna go back to school. I'm finna, I'm finna start my own business. Another one? Come on here. What happened to the other six? Come on here. And they just be talking about what they about to do. And here, what is God calling us? Guys, nothing wrong with power for confession. Nothing wrong with saying what you're going to do. You ought to write the vision. Make it plain. Oh, but I got to learn how to execute the instruction. I got to learn how not just to say what God has said, but I got to execute what God has said. Oh, look at Abraham. Genesis 22 and 3. The Bible says, so Abraham rose early in the morning. Look at the execution. God told him he went. We see no hesitation. We see no delay. We see him not wrestling with it. God told him and then he executed. But, but I want to go another further because I don't want do to do the text any damage and make it seem as if Abraham is baby Jesus. Abraham is human just like us. Abraham is a man. He's human just like you and I. So he, he's not stripped of his humanity. But I just believe Abraham got up early in the morning because I believe this brother was tossing and turning. I believe he could not sleep. Thinking about what it is that God is asking him to do. You mean to tell me, God, this thing that I've been waiting for all these years, you're asking for it back? Listen to me good. Abraham waited on his son for 25 years. Many theologians suggest that Isaac now at this time is about 20 some odd years old. Some say 25 years old. So if Abraham been waiting on him for 25 years and Isaac is now 25 years old, how long has it been? Oh, y'all the smart class. It's been, it wasn't a trick question. It's been 50 years. Come on, you learned that Savannah State. It's been 50 years. It's been 50 years. Come on here. It's been 50 years. In other words, what, what is God saying? God is saying to us that, listen, Abraham, I don't care how long you've been waiting. I want it. This brother, Isaac, has been in the heart of his father for over 50 years. He's been looking for him for 25 and walking with him for 25 been in his heart for 50 years and he says I, I need you to sacrifice him I need you to bring him to me and what is God saying God is saying that he's not telling us to kill our children he's not telling us that he wants a human sacrifice that's why he stopped Abraham from doing it but God is saying to us no matter how long you've been holding on to the dream no matter how long you've been holding on to this vision no matter how long you've been looking and striving and getting the way you are and now you're finally there God says I, I, I want it back that we can live in such a way 
that where God can be accused of being an Indian giver what, 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 what would cause God to ask for the blessing back what would cause God to ask for what he's given us back whenever it is I've allowed that blessing to replace him yes sir and God say come on give it back to me oh don't make God have to ask for the blessing back don't make God have to it's called foreclosure it's called repossession don't make God ask for it back because I didn't know how to handle what it was that he blessed me with and God will ask for the blessing back oh I just believe Abraham couldn't sleep he executed what God told him to do but he would toss it and turn it but he did what he needed to do I can't imagine I told him at 9 o'clock so I couldn't imagine God asking me for any of my children each one of my children have a, place, a special place in my heart just like your children have a special place in your heart I can look at each one of their lives and how they got here and what took place during the time they got here and it just does something to me my oldest daughter come on here I had her a little soon I had her before I was ready to be a daddy I had to learn how to grow up real fast I was trying to I was a snotty nose little boy myself and now all of a sudden I got to take care of somebody else that taught me that brought me into manhood real quick y'all not gonna help me in here my oldest daughter who's not a mistake oh but God took my mistake and showed me his grace yes sir oh she got a special place in my heart Kendall was born after we had been married for five years they told us we couldn't have any children they told us she didn't have anything to produce a child oh but when Kendall came around all I kept doing was the possible oh and everything I know. Next thing I know, whoop, there it was. Yes, sir. I, 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 I just kept doing my part, and I was I was trusting God to do his part. I ain't had nothing to do with what the Lord was going to do. I just kept doing what I got. Well, well, am I telling you, she got a special place in my heart, and even when you look at our baby girl, Carson, the one I was just messing with, many of you don't know this. Lady, see, we're going through so many complications when she had Carson. They told us, they will tell us that, that she's going to have this kind of birth defect. Tell them she's going to have a high percentage. She's going to have Down syndrome. She's going to have this, and she's going to have that and all the complications she was having and my God that took us through the ringer we were trying to stay faithful we were trying to stay prayerful oh but it's nothing like when somebody tell you something wrong with your baby it's nothing like when somebody say there's something wrong with your child oh but when she came out my God she been running ever since yes sir and he had nothing wrong now I'm like my God Lord have mercy can, can I tell you that each one of them have a special place and you know about baby boy getting ready to come first boy first son I had gave up on even having a son I had and said God I guess it's not your will oh but can I tell you God God saw in his infinite wisdom God saw what it was that he wanted to do in me and through our family oh we're not better oh but can I tell you I'm glad that God did this thing each one of them have a special place I want to ask you if God asked you for any of your children if God asked you for something that's near and dear to your heart what would be your response what would be your response we can sit here and be deep and say we're gonna say yes lord okay god no you're just being deep right now because that's so god not even asking for your child he asked for them cigarettes you can't give them <laughs> debbie deep god, god god just asked for a little bit of remedy you can't give him a little remedy you 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 can't stop scratching it off <laughs> i'm hit god but the bible says look what the book say he said, Abraham, I got five minutes. I'm getting out of here. Look, Abraham says, he says, take your son to Moriah. And Abraham said, I know, I know Mount Moriah. We go back like babes and pacifier. That's no liar. I don't know nothing about that. You got to at least be 90s, baby. You know what I'm talking about? They're like, all the season saints like, huh? <laughs> He said, go to Moriah. Look, look, look what Moriah means. Visible of the Lord. Chosen of the Lord. Provided by Jehovah. Here it is. Here's my point. Moriah literally means instruction of God. Listen to my big point. Whatever God is instructing us to do, it's my responsibility to execute it. Whatever the instruction is, whatever he's calling me to do. Verse 4 says, on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place from afar off. He looked up and he saw the place. Verse 5, then Abraham said to the young men, he said, stay right here. We're going to go. We're going to, me and the boy are going to go over there to worship. Look what he says. And come again to you. <laughs> Abraham is instructed by God to go kill his son. Go take him to Mount Moriah 
and I want you to go and offer him up to me. Abraham saw the place from a distance, and he tells the men, y'all stay right here. And can I tell you that there are some places in your worship, there are some places in your walk with God that you can't carry your, your BFL. You can't carry your, your, your cut partner. You can't carry people that you hang out with. Come on here. But God is saying every now and then you got to leave some people behind. But y'all miss the prophetic declaration that Abraham made. Abraham said, we're going to go and we're going to worship. And he said, I'm going to come again to you. We're going to come back again. Come on here. I see something in the life of Abraham. I see the expectation of a comeback. I, I don't know who I'm talking to in here. But y'all to look at somebody and say, I'm coming back. Oh, come on. Look at somebody and say, I'm coming back. I, I know things are bad right now, but you ought to expect to come back. I know things are looking dark right now, but you ought to expect to come back. Oh, come on here. I'm the comeback here. Oh, I may look fragile. I may look frail. I may look too young. I may look too innocent. Oh, but don't you underestimate when God puts his super on my natural. I got to come back in me. Oh, come on here, somebody. I know I've been divorced, but I got to come back in me. I know I've been experienced file 13. Oh, but I got to come back in me. Oh, I know I experienced repossession. I know I've experienced foreclosure, but I got to come back in me. Is there anybody in here that got to come back in them that your last season will not be your last season? That your last downfall will not be your downfall? That what you've been going through will not be where you stay? I'm getting ready to come back. Push somebody and say, I'm getting ready to come back. I'm getting ready to come back. I got a bounce back anointing. I started from the bottom, and now God getting ready to raise. He getting ready to raise me back up. I feel a catapult anointing. Can I tell you that every now and then God, he'll pull you back. He'll draw you back. He'll get you back just to be able to release you the way you can spring back. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. I say, God will pull you back. God will draw you back just to release you so you can spring into your destiny. I'm on my way back. I'm on my way back to my worship. I'm on my way back to my status. Come on, give God some praise up in here. Sit down for a second. Give me five seconds. Let me out uh, am I getting y'all getting anything out of this? Or I'm just I'm just boring y'all to death. I'm boring. Look, 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 listen to this. He says, verse 6, 22, 6. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and his knife. So they went both of them together. Verse 7 says, And Isaac said to his father, My father, he said, Here I am, son. Behold the fire, behold the wood. Where is the sacrifice? Where's the sacrifice? Obviously, they've been here before. Obviously, they've done this before. Isaac sees the sacrifice. He sees the wood. He sees the fire, but he doesn't see the sacrifice. Look what Abraham tells him in verse 8. He says, God will provide. <sighs> Not only am I going to expect the comeback, I'm going to expect God's provision. Oh, I don't know how God is going to provide. I don't know what God is going to do, but I know he's going to do something. I don't know how he's going to pay it, but I know he's going to pay it. I don't know how he's going to heal it, but I know he's going to heal it. I don't know how he's going to deliver me, but I know he's going to deliver me. I'm expecting provision. Oh, come on here, somebody. Rain is only a nuisance to people who don't have seed in the ground. But whenever I got seed in the ground, I'm looking for the rain. I'm looking for the abundance. I'm looking for God to water what I got in the ground because I need God to provide for me. I don't know how we're going to do it, but God, I need you to do it for me. I'm gone. I'm gone. Why, why, why am I looking for provision? Write this down. Hebrews 10, 23. Look, it says, let us hold fast our confession of hope without wavering. Here it is. Here's the best part of my message. For he who promised is faithful. This is why I can expect to come back. This is why I can expect provision because faithful is he that promised. My God, my God is faithful and I know he will not. He's not a man that he should lie. He's faithful. Needs he the son of man. He has to repent. He's faithful. If God said it, he's going to do it. He's faithful by two immutable things. God cannot lie. He's faithful. He won't put more on me than I'm able to bear. He's faithful. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. He's faithful. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God. He said, I shall abide under the shadow of almighty. He is I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. Yeah, I hope y'all enjoy y'all. Yeah, Sunday afternoon. I'm out of here. The Bible says, verse 9, 
when, when they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in the order and bound his son Isaac. Here, look, look at this. Look at this picture. Give me, give me that rope and bring, and bring a chair with you too. Bring a chair with you. Bring a chair with you. I want, I want y'all to see this picture. I want you to see this picture because the Bible says he went up to this mountain and he bound his son. At this time, Abraham, say with me, at this time, Abraham is about a hundred years old. Isaac is 25 years old. Can you imagine Isaac sees the altar? He sees the rope. And then he tells his son, come on, son. Sit down. Now you look at Isaac and look at Abraham. If you look at Isaac, look at Isaac. Isaac can stop me if he wanted to. <laughs> Him big. He sits Isaac down and tells Isaac to hold the rope. And Abraham ties his son. I love this because it was not Isaac that resisted because he's strong enough to resist. He's strong enough to say, no, daddy, what are you doing? Oh, but I'm glad that every now and then God will bind me to some things that I got the power to get out of. Oh, I know you want to get out of that marriage right now, but God said, no, I'm binding you to it. Oh, I know you want to quit that job right now, but God said, you got the strength to walk away. You can quit when you want to quit. Oh, but I'm binding you to it. Oh, I'm so glad that Isaac was a picture of another sacrifice that where nobody forced their life, nobody took their life. Oh, but the Bible says he willingly laid down his life. Oh, I'm so glad that God so loved the world that he's not an Indian giver, but no, he sent forth his son to willingly give his life. Oh, that's what Jesus said. You cannot take my life. Oh, he said, but I willingly let it down. I willingly lay it down so I can be able to pick it back up again. Oh, y'all not going to help me right here. I'm trying to tell you, you may feel like you can get out. You may feel like you can walk away, but God said, no, you got to stay right where you are. God said, no, you got to dig in another time. No, you got to keep on praying. No, you got to keep Keep on fasting because I'm trying to do something in your life. Come on, put your hands together. Give some praise. I said, give him some praise. I said, give him some glory. Because the Lord trying to do something in your life. I see the last thing. Because when, when Abraham was getting ready to take the knife and getting ready to kill his son, the Bible says that the voice of the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham, don't do it. He said, now I know, I know that you love me. But I heard. I feel like preaching real quick. I said, I heard, I heard Abraham looked up and he saw a ram caught in the thicket. Y'all ain't gonna help me preaching here. The Lord provided himself a sacrifice. It's my job to obey. It's God's job to give me provision. I have just like to believe the whole time Abraham was going up the one side of the mountain on the other side of the mountain. I believe the ram was going up the one side. Abraham was coming up one side and the ram was coming up the other. You going up one side of the mountain and your miracle is coming up the other side. You going up in faith and your blessing is coming up on the other side. You walking in faith and then your miracle is taking every step. I heard, I heard David say that the steps of a good man, they're ordered by the Lord. And I heard, I heard National Geographic say that the rams, they don't even go up that high. When God gets ready to bless me, he will defy the natural law. You'll look down your road and say, neighbor, every now and then, God will, he'll break a rule. He'll 
break a rule. He's a rule breaker. He's a water walker. He's a one and open up the deaf ears. He's a one and open up the blinded eye. He'll break a rule. He'll come to where you are to see about his baby. He'll come where you are to give you what you need. I heard. Thank you, brother Watts. I said I heard. That's your cue to get up. I said, I heard. You still ain't in your seat. I said, I heard. I heard Isaiah. Isaiah not even here. But I'm just playing around. But now I'm trying to tell you that Abraham said he is Jehovah Jireh. Is there anybody in here that know that the Lord will supply your need? He not an Indian giver. He gave Abraham a son. He asked for the son back. He let the son live. Then he sent his son. That's what Christmas is about. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Don't stay at the crib. You got to go from the crib to the cross. You got to go from the crib to the cross. We're going to that same mountain and he's getting ready to kill Isaac. Thousands of years later, on the hill, far away, they hung my savior. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. He hung his head and he died. Look at somebody say he died. Didn't he die? But I'm so glad that's not how the story ends. But early, I said early, I said early, early, early. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Come on, stand on your feet. If you receive the resurrection power, if you're glad about his sacrifice, come on, give God some praise, some glory, and some honor.